using some kind of text, be it code or templates, to create your cloud resources is generally regarded as the best approach for creating resilient cloud-based systems. AWS CDK allows you to use code to set up your AWS resources, and you can choose from any one of several mainstream programming languages. There are a ton of advantages to this approach. It's self-documenting. If anyone needs to know what resources are in a system, they can simply look at the CDK code. It allows infrastructure changes to be code-reviewed and version controlled just like your application logic. It allows you to set up multiple instances of a given resource or set of resources with slight variations. The easiest example of this is setting up the same set of resources in two different AWS accounts, one for testing and another for production. Finally, there are high-level CDK constructs that allow you to quickly spin up commonly used patterns of AWS resources, all with a few lines of code. All right, let's go through a lightning fast tutorial on setting up a simple application with AWS CDK. Now this application is going to consist of just a DynamoDB table and a Lambda that has permissions to write to that DynamoDB table. We'll use a Lambda that I created in a previous video using Rust, so check a link in the description if you want to see that video. One thing I'm going to assume that you already have is an AWS CLI that's configured with your AWS credentials. The first thing we're going to do is install Node.js if you don't already have it. Now the version of Node.js supported by CDK usually lags a little bit behind the latest version of Node, so be wary of that. So let's go ahead and install Node. On a Mac, that's brew install node. Okay, now we're ready to install the CDK CLI. And I'm gonna install this with npm. So the command is npm install dash g uh, CDK. And I'm gonna choose a specific version, which you don't have to do. If you're on a Mac and you wanted to install CDK with homebrew, you can do that as well with uh, brew install AWS dash CDK. Now what we wanna do is create our project and the CDK CLI will help us do that. We're first gonna create the directory for our project. So mctr introduction to CDK, uh, CD into that directory. The CDK CLI expects you to be in the directory where you wanna create your project files. Then we're gonna do CDK in it and we're gonna say language is TypeScript. You can choose from several different languages for CDK. TypeScript is kind of the first class citizen in the CDK world. The CDK init command is gonna set up all the scaffolding for our project, the file structure, the package.json and whatnot. Now let's open it in our IDE. Okay, when we first open our project in the IDE, you'll see there's a lib directory and that's where all your TypeScript files go. You can see this is a node project, so there's a package.json. We're not gonna be messing with this at all in this example. So it has some pre-populated code here. So by default, you have this class called introduction to CDK stack that is a subclass of the stack class. And in this context, stack actually represents a CloudFormation stack. If you haven't worked with CloudFormation, don't worry too much about it. Basically, it's a logical grouping of resources. I can make multiple CloudFormation stacks in one CDK project, and each stack might have a separate set of resources that are all kind of related to each other. We're gonna do some setup here. We're gonna delete this, this commented out code here. We're not gonna use that. That's an example of setting up an SQS queue. Delete that. We're gonna break out the import statements a little bit because we're gonna add a few things here. For this example, there's two main resources we wanna create in this CDK stack. The first is our DynamoDB table, and the second is our Lambda. Each AWS service kinda of has a corresponding construct library in CDK. So AWS Lambda and DynamoDB both have their own construct library, so we're gonna import those. In the past, if you use CDK version one, all of these construct libraries were generally in separate NPM packages. You had to add all the, all the different construct libraries to your package.json and make sure all the versions match and all that. CDK version two does, does away with all that. So all the stable APIs exist in the AWS CDK lib NPM package. So we're gonna be writing all of our code today in the constructor for this CDK stack. The first thing we're gonna do is create our DynamoDB table. And this table is gonna be called users. So we're gonna do const DDB users table new ddb that table this so each cdk construct has to be passed in the stack object that it's being created in that's what the, this argument is for we're passing in introduction to cdk stack which is what's creating this resource you also specify a cloud formation logical id for the resource which isn't actually the name of the dynamo table it's just if you go in the cloud formation stack in the aws cli you'll see this, this table is called users there's two main props we want to pass for this dynamo db table the table name which is actually what it's going to be called and what our application will expect it to be called when it writes to it. So we're gonna call it users, and then we're gonna specify a partition key just like we would in the AWS console. Our partition key is gonna be a UID or a user ID. And we're just gonna say it's a string. The nice thing here is that because this is TypeScript, you actually get IntelliSense, so that can help a lot. You might not get that if you write your CDK in another language like Python or JavaScript. The next thing we're gonna do is create our Lambda function. So we're gonna create a function variable here. We're going to use the lambda.function construct. 
we're going to give it a CloudFormation logical ID. And we're going to pass the function some props. There's four main props we have to worry about here. And these are things you'd configure in the AWS console if you were creating this Lambda manually. The first is the runtime, which in our case is going to be Amazon Linux 2 provided runtime since we're, our Lambda is written in Rust. Again, the IntelliSense is really nice here. So we're going to do provided AL2. And the handler field is going to be, um, we're just going to enter some default value. Again, that's not used. The code property tells the construct where our Lambda code comes from. You can actually point it to a file on an S3 bucket. You can actually have inline JavaScript here. So you could have a JavaScript file in your CDK project that actually contains the code for your Lambda. I think in production scenarios, you probably wouldn't do that, but it, it's nice for testing purposes. For this example, we're actually gonna grab a zip file from a different project on the file system. So we're gonna use the lambda.code.fromasset function to do that. And we're literally just gonna pass in a file path to the zip file that we want to use for this Lambda. That's all good. Now we need to specify a CPU architecture and I'm gonna intentionally make a mistake here because of something I wanna show you later. This Lambda is actually built for ARM and we're gonna specify an x86 architecture here, x86-64. Okay, so now we have our DynamoDB table and our Lambda. There's one more thing we need to do and that's authorize the Lambda to write to the Dynamo table. This is a good example of where CDK provides higher level abstractions that make things really simple. So we could go and create an IAM execution role for the Lambda, give that execution role DynamoDB write permissions, and then attach that execution role to the Lambda when we create the Lambda. But the DynamoDB CDK construct has this nice function called grant write data, which you can call on the table and pass in a Lambda function, and it does all of that for you. It authorizes that execution role to write to that Dynamo table. So this is just one line of code. Instead of having, I don't know, five, 10 lines of code to do this, CDK allows you to do it in one. So we just do DDB users table dot grant write data, and then we pass in the Lambda function. And that's it, that's all we need to do to authorize our Lambda to write to our Dynamo table, just that one line of code. Now to make sure we've done everything correctly, we can run a command called CDK synth, which actually takes your CDK code and builds CloudFormation templates from it. Before we build our project, we need to run something called CDK bootstrap. And CDK bootstrap actually sets up your AWS account for using CDK. So you only need to do this once for every AWS account you wanna use CDK with. And I've already done it from my account, so you can see it says there's nothing to do here. Your AWS user actually needs a bunch of permissions to get CDK bootstrap command to work. One option is to give the user a full admin policy that'll give it permission to do anything. Then you can remove that policy once your CDK bootstrap is done. Or if you wanna get more strict with your permissions, you can add the, the set of policies here. So it's gonna need ECR, write permissions, S3 permissions, code deploy, SSM, CloudFormation, and Lambda. It's gonna need all of those to actually complete successfully. If I were to do this again, I'd probably just give my user admin permissions and then take them away when Bootstrap is done, but whichever approach you prefer. You could probably get more granular than this even, these full access policies. You probably don't need full access for all these services, but at the time this video was made, I didn't see AWS published in their documentation exactly what set of permissions is necessary for CDK Bootstrap to work. Uh, hopefully by the time you watch this, they have something like that already. But the fallback is just to give the user full admin access while you're running the bootstrap command. One other thing you have to do for your user is to give it permission to assume other roles in the account. Because when you do CDK deploy, it's actually gonna assume a different role to actually do that deployment. So I did have to add an inline policy to my user. I call it assume roles. And all it does is give the STS assume role action for all resources. That was sufficient to allow CDK to assume that other role. If you don't do this, CDK will give you an error saying we're not able to assume another role. This is a solution for that. The next step after bootstrapping is to run CDK synth, and that's gonna take our CDK code and compile it to CloudFormation templates. Now, if we want, we can actually look at the templates that got generated by the synth command. Typically, you don't have to look at these unless you're troubleshooting a problem, but all the templates go into the cdk.out directory. If you're writing CloudFormation templates directly, this is the sort of thing you'd have to write. CDK is much better. Okay, now we're ready to run CDK deploy to actually deploy our resources. And it's gonna give us a list of resources that it's about to create. And it's gonna confirm with us, we say yes. We can see it's creating the table, the execution role, Okay, we can see the deploy succeeded. So we can see our stack in the CloudFormation part of the AWS console, and we can see all the resources that got created, the Lambda function, the execution role, and the Dynamo table. Let's go see if our Lambda function actually works. And 
and it failed. And this is because we set the architecture to be x86 when it actually needs to be ARM. So let's go ahead and go change that. We'll change it to ARM64, save that. And now there's something called CDK diff that'll actually show you the differences between your code and what's actually deployed. So this is pretty cool. So run CDK diff and it'll look at what's deployed and the templates that are generated by your code and it'll display the differences. So we can clearly see for our Lambda function, we're changing one attribute, the architecture from x86 to ARM64. To deploy that, we just do CDK deploy again and deploy will actually see the differences and apply the differences. It's not gonna recreate the Lambda or anything like that. It's actually gonna change the existing Lambda. Okay, that succeeded. We see the architecture is x86 right now. Let's refresh and see if that changed. Yep, so now it's ARM64, cool. Let's try running it again. And that succeeded, cool. So let's go to our Dynamo table and make sure that record got written. There it is, that's our record. So that's a lightning tutorial on how to create a simple CDK application that deploys a DynamoDB table a Lambda and gives the Lambda authorization to write to the DynamoDB table. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.